going to go ahead and get started again. Again, I'd like to welcome you to the Fort Worth Chamber's largest, 16th largest, or this is the largest event that we hold each year. It's the uh, largest, and I think there is a record here of 1,300 people. And so, yeah, that's great. And as I like to think about it, it's 1,300 of Mayor Price's closest friends. <laughs> so anyway, please feel free to finish your lunch. And I'm going to go ahead and recognize some of our special guests and sponsors here today. So as our presenting sponsor, I'd like to recognize Simmons Bank and representative by, uh, represented by Terry Smith, who is the regional chairman for Fort Worth, Dallas. So thank you, Terry. And I'd also like to introduce our platinum sponsors. And uh, as I mention your company's name, if you would stand, the representative stand, and please hold your applause until I'm finished uh, making the introductions. So platinum sponsors are Baylor Scott and White, All Saints Medical Center, Janice Whitmire, Chief Operating Officer, BNSF Railway Company, French Thompson, Director of Public Projects and Systems Design, Chase Bank, Todd Rich, uh, Richbert, Ritter Birch, sorry about that, Todd. I knew I was going to stumble here. Uh, Fort Worth Marketing and, and Commercial Banking. Community Foundation of North Texas, Rose Bradshaw, President and CEO. Encore Live, Walter Kinsey, Owner and CEO. Fine Line, Tony Lee, Chief Operating Officer. Frost Bank, Hadley Warner. He's Regional President, Tarrant County. Kelly Hart and Hallman, Mary Ann Ald, Managing Partner, and Red Productions, Red Sanders, President, Producer, and Dreamer. All right, thank you all very much. Also like to uh, invite you to look at your programs, and in the programs you'll see our gold, silver, and bronze sponsors. And I want to thank you all for your investment in the chamber. Now at our head table, we also have some special guests. We have the Honorable Mayor Betsy Price from Fort Worth. We also have Mark Nurden. He's the uh, president of Bank of Texas, Fort Worth region. And by the way, Bank of Texas is our presenting sponsor this year for the Forte Awards for Small Business of the Year. We also have Jason Whitley. He's the host of Inside Texas Politics. Most of you have seen him probably on WFAA Channel 8. Jason. And we have Bill Thornton, our president and CEO of the Fort Worth Chamber. And we also have numerous selected officials here today, and I don't want to miss any one individual. So when I call the name of your governing body, if you'll please stand. And again, if we'll hold our applause, applause until all the groups have been introduced. Senators and representatives from the U.S. Congress. Senators and representatives from the Texas Legislature. Judges, commissioners, sheriffs, other elected officials from Tarrant County. Board members of Tarrant County College District. Board members of Tarrant County Regional Water District, council members of the City of Fort Worth, trustees from the Fort Worth ISD, Mayor of Arlington, Jeff Williams, Mayor of Dallas, Mike Rawlings, Mayor of North Richland Hills, Oscar Trevino, and former mayors of Fort Worth, Mike Moncrief and Ken Barr. So I want to thank you all for your service. I want to thank you all for your service to the citizens of our communities. Okay, now I'd like to uh, turn our attention to the Forte Award winners. We'd like to recognize the recipients of the Fort Worth Chamber Small Business of the Year, which we uh, last year revamped and lost, launched the inaugural Forte Award. But first, before I get started, I want to tell you just a few stats about the importance of entrepreneurs to the Chamber. About 90% of the Chamber's 2,000 business investors are small businesses with less than 50 people. 
65% of the new jobs in the U.S. economy are created by small businesses. That's uh, according to the U.S. Department of Labor and Statistics. And almost 62% of the Texas 2017 GDP growth resulted from efforts from companies of fewer than 100 employees. These companies really do make up the heart and soul of our Fort Worth business community, and whether they want to stay a small business or become a Fortune 500 company, the Chamber's there to support them. Also want to thank our sponsors uh, for giving the small business this platform to shine and to model their best practices as Fort Worth's finest entrepreneurs. So our presenting sponsor for the uh, Forte Award this year is Bank of Texas. So thank you, Mark. Also, we have platinum sponsors for the Forte Award, which is Clifton Larson Allen, LLP, and the Neely School of Business, Institute for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, TCU. And the media sponsors are the Fort Worth Business Press, and gold sponsors are listed in the program that you have in front of you. We also want to thank the members of the small business community for their leadership and helping judge this expertise. So let's let all these folks have a big round of applause. I do want to mention that this year's competition uh, it changed a little bit. In past years, we had uh, put them in categories by number of employees. This year, we changed it to category by industry. So the 12 finalists competing fell into the following categories. Consumer and retail, manufacturing and distribution, professional services, and emerging business. Of those, four businesses were announced as category winners at a January 24th event held in the near south side by the chamber. Then a blue ribbon panel of judges, they grouped and selected one, of the, one for the overall Grand Forte Award winner, in which I'll announce their name here shortly. The judges looked at workplace environment, core values, community engagement, and that helped make their decision for him. And I do want to tell you that the scores were incredibly close. In fact, there was fewer than five points difference between all the competitors. So I encourage you to look at the profiles in, of the businesses. The details are in the program that you have, because these are four exceptional enterprises. So as, the, uh, as I mentioned, the names of the companies would represent as please stand. So for emerging business, which is businesses that have been in existence for less than three years, we have Sixth Avenue Homes, co-founders Jamie Ice and Jimmy Williams. If you'll stand. <laughs> Sixth Avenue Homes is a one-stop shop for buying, selling, renovating, and designing homes in Fort Worth. In manufacturing, we have Silver Creek Materials, Robert Dow, owner. <laughs> Silver Creek Materials is recycling, compost, mining, and organic products leader. In the area of retail and consumer, we have Tribe Alive. That's Carly Burson, who's the co-founder and CEO. Tribe Alive is an ethical fashion brand focused on moving the industry towards a more sustainable approach. And in professional services, we have Elements of Architecture, Debbie Fulweiler, and she's the president. <laughs> elements of Architecture creates environments that shape the human experience. All right, so now for the big moment. And the Grand Forte Award goes to Sixth Avenue Homes. Jamie and Jimmy, if you'd like to come on up.
All right, I want to thank all the outstanding entrepreneurs that make Fort Worth such a great place to live and work, and also for their leadership in our business community. And now, I would like to invite to the stage Terry Smith, Fort Worth Dallas Regional Chairman for Simmons Bank, and Terry will introduce Mayor Price. Terry. Thank you, Lonnie. Good afternoon. It's great to see all these people that came out today in the cold and rain. I know the chamber and everyone here, we appreciate everyone's attendance uh, and thank you all for coming. On behalf of the nearly 300 North Texas Associates of Simmons Bank, we are proud to once again be the title sponsor for the Mayor's State of the City Address to the Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce. At Simmons Bank, we are a $17 billion regional financial services company operating in seven states with a 116-year history of serving the financial needs of consumers, entrepreneurs, and businesses of all sizes, helping them achieve their personal and professional successes. So how do we make our businesses successful? I believe there are a multitude of formulas for success. Our theme at last year's meeting revolved around talent, and I think we all agree that talent is certainly a key ingredient for success. But talent without effort will fail every time. We have to put in the work to be successful. Every business owner and executive in this room knows how much work it takes to maximize the potential of our business models. For 2019, the city of Fort Worth has a nearly $2 billion revenue budget. That would rank in the top 50 largest companies based in North Texas. So yes, our city is big business. And since we all know how much work it takes to make our businesses successful, just imagine how much work it takes to make our city successful. And oh, what a success it is. Cowtown, Panther City, a suburb of Dallas. <clears throat> Hi, Mayor. Well, that's our history. But Fort Worth has become so much more. Fort Worth is a shining star, a city on the rise, and is now the 15th largest city in the country. Business friendly, quality education, culturally enriched, and an entertainment destination. Now, all that didn't just happen. It took work. Our city staff works hard, and it can be stressful. I know this by the number of times that I've shared stress relief sessions with city manager David Cook at the Fort Worth Club about 6 o'clock in the evenings. Our city council works hard too, but no one individual works harder to grow and enrich this city than our mayor, Betsy Price. Mayor Price has been a tireless public servant for nearly two decades. Nearing completion of her fourth term as mayor, she has put in the work. Work on promoting jobs, strengthening education, and improving mobility. Mayor Price has worked and made significant strides along the path of her vision of a healthy, engaged, and fiscally responsible city. She knows what it takes, and she has delivered. So yes, being mayor is hard work. So why does she do it? Because it's worth it. Fort Worth is worth the work. And we appreciate the efforts put forth on our behalf by all of our public servants. No matter where we live, they're working for us. So Mayor, it's time for you to come do your work here. So please help me welcome our Mayor, Betsy Price. So as we're driving around the city, okay. what do you see? The mayor says a lot that Fort Worth is a city coming of age, and that's exactly what I see. 
I see it's a city that is rooted in this small town, great environment that's experiencing this massive growth, that's embracing creativity, embracing our Western heritage. There's just so many possibilities and the people here are ready to try to make it happen. Fort Worth is just right on the cusp of we're we're growing incredibly fast, and we are right on the cusp of doing really, really big things. When I first started here in 1994, Fort Worth was not the 15th largest city in America. It really is amazing to see all the development, all the building, and see companies relocate to Fort Worth, Texas. You've seen everything on 7th Street, how much it's done downtown, how much it's changed. We see the growth in Fort Worth, and I thank Betsy Price for everything she's doing to bring people into Fort Worth. All right, let's head into the school. All right. We've been in the top, fastest growing cities for the last 15 years. We won't continue that growth if we can't have an educated workforce. So I'm the community volunteer for Reed Fort Worth. I've been doing it for about two and a half years, and I did it for one reason, and that's because Betsy Price asked me to do it. We started Reed Fort Worth because we lost two companies to Austin. They felt like our workforce wasn't gonna be there when they needed in a few years. We appreciate the Reed Fort Worth program. We have several organizations that have come through that partnership and do one-on-one -on -one reading with the students. It is affecting change and the children are improving. Somebody has to come along beside the school district and be their partner. They're doing a great job, but we need to move that up a level and they can't do it alone. It's about jobs. It's about the health of your community. It's about engaged people who understand how the city works. And the other piece that I'm passionate about is the health of this community. The mayor has always been focused on health. She's a biker, she's out doing all kinds of things. Our company was co-sponsored to have Blue Zones come. It has to do with people living longer, healthier lifestyles. It's a lot of work. It isn't just checking the box. You have to actually change the way you do things. It's a real commitment. We're the biggest city to be Blue Zone certified. All of that makes you a more attractive community for businesses, too. So those are probably some of the things you're most proud of, mm -hmm. that you're not just in the middle of. They've been implemented, and they're kind of done. They're not done. That's just the first step. The key for Fort Worth is our ability to partner together. Partnerships are not easy, man, but the communities that are doing it great are those communities that are willing to partner. Dallas has many communities within it. Fort Worth has one. And we have the ability to get a lot of things done because we can bring together a relatively small group of people, set a plan, and move forward. Fort Worth has become a big city, but it's retained that hometown feel and it has that small town heart. It's not just your big city anywhere in USA. It's a city of great character made up of great character. Fort Worth is friendly. Fort Worth is trailblazing. Fort Worth is worth the work. our friend from WFAA, Inside Texas Politics. Made the drive over this morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm delighted to have you with us. Appreciate you know, it. Before we jump into q and I want to make just a few comments right. to people here. You know, believe it or not, this is my eighth state of the city. It's hard to believe it's been that long. And it has been a wonderful ride. It's been a wild ride, I'll give you that as we've grown from 17th to 15th largest. But the energy this job gives me, the passion that I have for this community, it just makes me want to get up every morning and dance across this stage. You know, it's a 24-7 job if you're not careful. And my family has sacrificed so much. My sweet husband, Tom, who can't be with us today because he's home with the flu. I think he got it from his wife. <laughs> And my children, my brothers and sisters, and all of our dear friends, and my two oldest grandsons, Chaplain Price, who are with us over here. They know that lots of times 
I don't miss many parties, many birthday parties, but lots of times I'm late or not there alone. So thank you to my family for their patience in this job. For my fellow council people, you all, you men and women, are incredible in what you do. You know, we discuss a lot of issues and we don't always agree on all of them, but we have a way of working through our issues and everyone understanding in classic Fort Worth fashion that we have to put the city first and we have to work together to bring success to Fort Worth. It's a complete contrast to what you see at the national level. And I think our council members deserve a round of applause for that. <laughs> Fort Worth's come a long way, Jason, <laughs> since we started as an outpost in 1849 on the Trinity River. We're a city that's made up of great character, of great characters, and Fort Worthians have grit and a bit of a renegade spirit. But all in all, we're fiercely loyal, whether you're the first time in Fort Worth or whether you're a fourth or fifth generation, people love Fort Worth and Fort Worth truly is worth the work. I'll continue to work on it and it's great. So Jason, All right. let's jump right into this well, Q&A. We're going to address a number of topics. You see them behind us here. So let's start with uh, finances first. This is the, uh, the, the pension has made the biggest news yep. lately. It's something we've covered at Channel 8 as well too. Um, it was in danger of running out of money as, as everyone probably knows in the next 20 to 30 years or so. Uh, a compromise was reached. Retirees will keep their cost of uh, living adjustments as well too. And it appears that Fort Worth will be the largest city not to have to go to Austin to get this figured out, which is, which is pretty incredible. What, two questions here. What lessons did the uh, city learn in the process? And secondly, this was a goal of yours, getting the, the fiscal house in order since you took office in 2011. Yeah, when I was elected in 2011, and you all know I came from the tax office because they all had to write major checks to me. <laughs> At one point or another, if you didn't, I probably came to see you. Is that where you got those Ray-Ban sunglasses? That's where I got those Ray-Ban sunglasses, hide a little bit behind them. But I came to the city and I knew that we had to get for the city to remain competitive, to continue to grow, to increase our growth, to attract young families, to keep people aging in place, we had to get our financial house in order. And that started with what do we do with our pension? Every one of you expect your city leaders when they're elected to tackle the hard issues, to tackle the fiscal issues and to get that straight. The pension was the major thing that we campaigned on and set about to fix. And I'm proud to say the first change that we made in 2012 kept this pension from being totally upside down at $3 billion. Right now, we're facing a $1.6 billion unfunded liability. Now, who knew I was going to face and this council would face this pension twice? But what we've learned is that we put a proposal on the table after David Cook and his team worked for nearly three years to find an answer. We brought a proposal forward. It wasn't acceptable for our employees and for our retirees. So we ask our labor groups and our general employees to come back to the table. Heck, we actually locked ourselves in a room and spent almost five hours one day and about three hours another day working on this with our friends at the chamber, our POA, 440, our fire group, and our general employees. We were able to put forth a solution. Is it perfect? No, but this is an incredible incredibly emotional issue for people. You're talking about people's futures. You're talking about their retirement. Remember, city employees don't draw Social Security. It's only their own savings and the pension. So we've got a proposal on the table. Our charter requires, our pension fund requires a vote of our employees. Council came together and voted unanimously to accept our changes to increase the city's contributions, to leave the retirees' COLA, and to ask our employees to increase their contributions. And right now, our employees are voting. They have two more days to vote. We did a whole series of educational opportunities for employees so they would know what they're voting on. And I feel good about this vote. And if that happens, and I feel certain it will, Fort Worth will be the largest city to settle it locally. It's a local issue. It impacts all of you as business people, and it certainly impacts all of our employees and the retirees. Mayor, you, as you mentioned, the employee vote ends on Friday. Approval requires 50% plus one. Yeah. Will you have the votes? 
I think we will. It's an odd wrinkle in this particular ordinance that requires not only that we have a positive vote, but that 50% plus one of our 7,000 employees vote. And I think with the help of our team that's worked hard on educating people, that we will have the votes. I feel, I hope I'm not being too optimistic, but I feel very good about it. That's where the state of the city is, optimism. That's exactly right. This let's, is a great city. Uh, Mayor, let's talk about the bond too. Uh, voters overwhelmingly passed the 2018 bond, $399.5 million. It's a new library, two new fire stations, uh, community center, new police station, I believe. What's hap what happens in a lot of cities is these bond projects drag on for years. You insist that's not going to happen with this. That's right. If we're going to ask all of you to vote, to put your money on the table, however, we voted this bond in with no increase in our tax rate. In fact, we've lowered our tax rate, and I think we're going to talk we'll a talk little about more that. about that. But when I was elected in 2011, we started looking at our capital campaign and our bonds and realized that we still had bonds that weren't delivered from 1994. And just last year, we finished delivering on the 2000, the last of the 2000 bonds. We're not different from other cities, but when we did this 2018 bond election, we promised that if you would approve it, and you did at 81%, that we would deliver in four years. And I'm proud to say that all the arterial roads that are on this bond are already contracted and in the design phase. Victory Forest is well underway, a couple of the other community centers. This bond package will be delivered own time and within the dollars that we ask you for. That's a big win, folks. When we were dealing with bond elections that were nearly 20 years old, to move that to four, <coughs> excuse me, we couldn't have done that without well, Roger Vernable and Steve Cook's help in property management. While you grab some water there, too, let's talk about the property tax rate. The city slashed the property tax rate as well, too. Uh, besides helping taxpayers, you made a good point. This was a competitive move, <coughs> as you mentioned Excuse in the video me, as well, too, uh, to better position Fort Worth to compete for businesses, to attract businesses. Yeah, you know, Fort Worth had the dubious distinction of having the highest tax rate of any major city in Texas, not by just a little, but by a whole lot. We had that because traditionally we had had much lower values. But there's, a, there's a slide for this too. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Mayor, but I think we have a slide this, for yeah. this as well too. Yeah, and we'll talk about this in just a second. Okay. But as our values begin to rise, we had the responsibility of reducing that rate. If we're going to remain competitive for young families, for older families, for businesses to come to Fort Worth, we had to get that rate down. Plus, if your value's going up, your tax bill continues to rise. It's our responsibility to alleviate some of that burden. But what we looked at, and I've seen this for years and worried a little bit about, Fort Worth's tax base is upside down. You can see from this slide, it's 64% residential and 36% property. Commercial. That line going, oh, commercial. Yeah, thank you. That's not healthy for a city, folks. That puts a huge burden on you as homeowners. Part of what we have to change and part of what we're going to talk about with economic development in a few minutes is increasing that commercial development. To do that, we simply had to slash that tax rate to remain competitive. And in three years, we've moved it down seven cents, and that puts us down in the lower bracket for major cities in Texas, which makes us much more attractive to businesses. Well, let's uh, shift topics now and talk about neighborhood investment, because <laughs> Regardless of the city, there are neighborhoods everywhere, as you know, that complain, they're overlooked, they're ignored, uh, et cetera. No different here. But three years ago, Mayor, you did something. Explain the strategy and whether it's worked. Yeah, three years ago, under David Cook's leadership, our city manager, we looked at how can we make all neighborhoods in Fort Worth successful? Because face it, folks, if we're honest, it's the squeaky wheel neighborhoods in Fort Worth that have gotten the service. Those lower income neighborhoods have been ignored. Not intentionally necessarily, but they have been. It's a slow ship to turn around. Downtown Fort Worth, Renaissance with Ed and Johnny and them didn't turn around overnight. This one won't either. It was 30 years on that project. But what we did was take what's the equivalent of a half cent of our property tax. It's roughly $3 million this year and invested in neighborhoods. We started with identifying neighborhoods where crime is high, poverty is high, education issues, safety issues, where infrastructure was not where it needed to be. 
we looked at those issues and we went in and our first neighborhood was in stop six area. That was three years ago. We went in and put additional police officers on the streets, many on bikes so that they know their neighbors. Neighborhood NPO, neighborhood patrol officers had additional help. We replaced street lights because who's going to get out and get to know their neighborhood and be proud of their neighborhood if it's dark at night? And crime goes up where street lights aren't in. We put in sidewalks so that people could get out and get engaged in their neighborhood. And the next neighborhood we tackled was Ash Crescent. Stop six is Gina Bivens and Ash Crescent is Kelly Allen Gray's neighborhood. And we also took code in to clean up. That was a big deal. And is it working? Yeah, it's working. Our data shows that crime has gone, crimes against property has gone down 25% wow. since we started that effort in Stop Six and Ash Crescent. And prostitution and drug crimes have dropped 53%. But the really heartwarming part is people feel better about their neighborhoods. And our building permits are up 48% in Stop Six and Ash Crescent. That's a big win for those neighborhoods. Wow. Our next, our next neighborhood will be the north side. As Jim Lane always says, the short north side, inside the loop. <laughs> and that's in Councilmember Flores' district, and that's a $3 million investment. It will be the same thing. Sidewalks, reduction in crime, code will be there cleaning up. I'm very, very pleased with this effort, and it really is changing neighborhoods. People feel good about getting out in their neighborhood again. And Mayor, for the squeaky neighborhoods who haven't been uh, touched by this yet, how do you ensure the integrity of the neighborhood remains that long-time residents aren't pushed out by all these new building permits? Yeah, long-term residents, that's always the issue. Gentrification so often comes. It's an issue that every city struggles with. How do you address that? But the idea here is not just to increase the values, but to increase the pride in your neighborhood so you want to stay there, to increase the ability for children to go to their neighborhood schools, to drive education forward. All of those will keep people in their homes and keep it just from gentrifying and turning over, as well as putting in new investments. Mayor, let's shift topics now to race and culture. It's something that's okay. been on a lot of minds lately. It's been in the headlines, been on uh, TV stations as well, including Channel 8. In December, the Race and Culture Task Force made a recommendation, released a recommendation rather, council accepted it. Now the city manager has 90 days to figure out how to implement this, uh, which the 90 days is coming up mm -hmm. in, uh, in a Middle few weeks March. from now. You said this is something we have to own, we have to address, but implementing these changes, that's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. It could cost millions of dollars. Is the city ready to spend that? I think we are. The Rice and Cultural Task Force brought to light a lot of issues that no one intentionally was, igno was ignoring. It just happened as business went forward, as we moved our neighborhoods, moved our business. They really peeled that Band-Aid back and took a hard look at Fort Worth tough conversations on what needed to change in Fort Worth and what had be, been impacted. Is it a perfect report? Probably not. There are those who disagreed with our method that we didn't listen to this and that, but it's a great start. It's a really good start, and this task force worked for 18 months on it. If you face it, Fort Worth is a tale of, like most big cities in the nation, Mayor Rawlings would agree, I know, like most big cities in the nation, it's a tale of two cities. The ones where there's great opportunity, integrity, and fortitude in the neighborhoods, and oftentimes lower incomes that tend to be, tend it to be neighborhoods of colors whose rich culture has been ignored. I think the city is definitely committed. The estimate is three million or more. We will hire an equity officer to help us implement this plan. And we will be leveraging a lot of our private dollars with our foundations to move this forward. I'm pleased with the report. I think looking at hard issues is just something we have to do, and I'm ready to roll our sleeves up and go to work. And Mayor, you mentioned the critics. Critics have said this, is, this should only be the beginning. So the question is, how do you ensure that this, is, this conversation continues? This is only the beginning. I think you have to keep it front and center. You, the city will have to hire someone who's an equity officer who's charged with implementing this plan. Or David Cook, our city manager, will have to assign an ACM to do it. We're looking at everything we do at the city through an equity lens, and it's data driven. If we take a hard look at the data that we have and move that forward based on data and equity, 
it'll stay on the front burner. And education will be the big piece, and we're going to get into education in a minute. Let's, let's Let me back up a minute, too, because absolutely. I mentioned Mayor Rawlings knowing recently about Dallas. Today, I want to thank Mayor Mike. Stand up. Mike is here, Rawlings. Most of you know that Mike and I were elected the same day and within a week had met to decide how we could drive this region forward together. Mike has been a champion for this region and he's a champion for Dallas and Fort Worth too. And so have I tried to be. We've done great work together. This picture was taken on a DFW trip in Paris and we made, we wowed Paris for DFW. <laughs> Mike is termed out as you know. So Mike, we're gonna miss you, but you're not done yet. I'll continue to keep you working. Thank you for your friendship and thank you for your hard work. Mayor, let's shift off to economic development. Fort Worth is reinventing itself uh, in this area here too with a new plan. And you told me something that's fascinating. Major companies know Dallas, but they don't know Fort Worth. No. What have you done to help change that? You know, that was one of the challenges when we did our economic development strategy a year and a half ago, and the Chamber did their Fortify plan. It came to light. We've kind of been seeing this for some time. It really is. It's DFW, which is alphabetical, of course. Right, Mike? I say it's FWD, and it drives him crazy. <laughs> but people just don't realize who Fort Worth is or what we have to offer. When you ask in that survey what size Fort Worth is, the average person in the nation guessed we're 48th, and we're 15th. Wow. So we've moved forward on incentive packages, working with all three chambers. We looked at what we need to encourage innovation businesses. Fortunately, as a result of that, we now have Amazon Air's largest facility. We have Uber Elevate coming in, design at Bell Helicopter, to encourage economic prosperity for all, to encourage innovation. But just as importantly as recruiting new business is how do we focus on growing our own businesses? How do we continue to raise that profile nationwide? The airport's been a big partner in helping that. The chamber organized a trip. We took business leaders, education leaders, myself and many others to Kansas City. Kansas City has done a really good job of one vision for KC, from education to economic development and raising their profile on a national level. And why not copy other people's successes? It gave us a great chance to talk about one Fort Worth and what we have to see. And that's a big piece of this. Is the strategy though just attracting these you know, behemoth businesses? How do you make sure you get the, you know, the small upstarts going no, as well too? Part of our expansion is how do we continue to focus on innovators? And the backbone of any strong economy is mom and pop operations, right. entrepreneurship. We have a good record of doing that, of looking at incentives for them, working at the back, the Business Assistance Center with Tech Fort Worth, UNT Health Science Center, and Alliance has an incubator that started two or three small successful businesses. I really think it's the whole picture. If you're gonna have prosperity for everyone, you have to look at how do you incentivize neighborhoods other than the ones that are already growing for business. How do we get additional businesses in the south side? How do we get additional businesses in the Wedgwood Southwest area? And part of that is focusing on mom and pop operations and potential incentives for them. You know, it's all about, it's the bottom line, economic development's gonna be about socioeconomic issues. How do we fight poverty, housing, childcare? And one issue that affects everybody is core city services. Let's, let's focus on yeah. core city services for a moment. There's an effort to transform the basic city services, and there's a good example the city has in Las Vegas Trail. Yep. Tell us what's going on there, how these different departments are working together. Yeah, I think most of this crew knows about LVT RISE, which Councilmember Byrd and T.D. Smyers from United Way are heading up. It's an effort to change a neighborhood that really saw a rapid tra trajectory in crime, a loss of vitality. We came together with core city services led by the city attorney's office. One particular hotel in that reg region was responsible for about 50% of the crime, mostly narcotic crime and prostitution. But we were able to, under state law, bring our city attorney, code compliance, and the police department to the table and really put the pressure on this hotel to either shut down 
or clean up their crime. I'm proud to say that effort of coming together, working collaboratively, has seen a huge reduction in the crime in that hotel. And, and overall, too, Fort Worth has some pretty good numbers yeah. to announce overall crime. Tell us about that. Yeah, the uh, Justice Center, the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU announced recently their crime statistics for major cities for 2018. Fort Worth saw the second largest drop in overall crime of any major city and the largest drop in violent crime in the nation. That's a big win. Congratulations. We truly, we truly are blessed with being an incredibly safe city, and that's a result of our hardworking police department, fire department, code, all the city. You know, I want to take a second, too, and talk about our police officers. These guys go, and women go out on the street for you every day and so that we can go home safely. And this year, unfortunately, on September the 14th, we had what no one wants to have. We lost Corporal Garrett Hull. Garrett is survived by his wife, Sabrina, and two children. And Sabrina's here somewhere, right over here, I think. Hey, Sabrina. Sabrina. But I know that Sabrina would like to thank the citizens of Fort Worth and Tarrant County for their outpouring of love. As your mayor, it was a terrible loss for everyone, but as mayor, it was heartwarming to see how much love and care came out of this community for our police officers. We should never forget what they're doing for us. Fire's just as important. We've got a new fire chief, Chief Davis. Chief Davis is right over here. Chief? And, and some interesting initiatives. Do what? Some interesting initiatives that yes, the uh, new chief is uh, taking on. Infant mortality. Yeah. Chief Davis came to us from Columbia, and he was a helicopter nurse, critical care nurse, as well as fire chief. He's come up with some really interesting things. Fort Worth and Tarrant County has the unfortunate distinction of having a very high infant mortality rate. We're about 6.7 deaths per thousand. Nationwide, it's about 5.6 per thousand, but in some of our neighborhoods, it's as much as 22%, 22 percent, 22 per thousand. Chief Davis has a plan to help tackle that. When our firemen are called, they answer 110 incident calls a year, 110,000, and about 60 percent of that 110,000 is medical. When they're called to a home where there's small children, they're going to look at infant safe sleep. Is there a crib? Are they sleeping with their parents? Which is a big indicator for sudden infant death. Many things. Is there child abuse potentially? And they plan to help these parents to alert the other authorities. Heck, they're even going to offer cribs to parents and teach them about it. He did it in Columbus, had a great downward trend as a result of it. Chief Davis has partnered with Assistant Chief Ed Krause and Chief Fitzgerald so that now police will begin to take this on too. So look for more information on infant, and I do think we're going in the right direction and this will drive us even further down. Chief, thank you and thanks to PD for partnering with you. Actually delivering cribs. Actually delivering cribs. Wow. Water department. The water, water department. Fort Worth had a big win there too, huh? We did. J.D. Powers Associates surveys people nationwide about the water quality and how people feel about their quality. And Fort Worth came out 12th highest in the quality awards. Mike, I'm sorry, Dallas was a little below us this time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That's a big thank you for our water department. But it's also a big thank you for our friends at TRWD. They're our raw water suppliers. They keep winning awards for what they supply to us and who we supply to, a stable supply of water. They're adding an additional 150 miles of water pipeline from East Texas and working with us on the TRVA project. That's a project that's gotten a lot of press, but together we will deliver this River Vision project and it will be a great benefit for the city of Fort Worth. The, the next issue is something, Mayor, I hope you, Mayor Rawlings, I hope you pay attention to this one. Mike knows I da pick on him all Dallas the time. Dallas needs to get this one before, uh, before you leave, if you don't mind, Mayor. CityBot. Ah, this City is fascinating. Bot. So Dallas has 311. You guys are about to get CityBot, which is a text message service. No longer do you have to wait on, a, on hold That's or wait true. for someone to answer the phone. You can text a problem in and it will get to the city department. Yes, yeah, CityBot is the brainchild of a young man uh, whose father was the longest serving mayor in the nation. CityBot's a cell phone app that'll roll out in March and April 
95% of us have a cell phone. Even some of you still have flip phones. But you'll be able to text if you see a pothole, if your trash isn't picked up, if you need to call code, a loose animal, whatever. But beginning this spring, you'll just enter CityBot's number. It'll take your information. It'll send you back a receipt. And then immediately it goes to the appropriate department they will see that someone is there to take care of that repair. Then they will send you a receipt back and a response saying, hey, we've handled it. If it's not appropriate, send us another one. We're really excited about CityBot. And that will all be done via text? It will all be done via text. So if some of you don't text, find a teenager and get them to teach you how to do it. For, for all those with flip phones still out there. Uh, oh, you can text on some of those flip phones. That's old school right there, definitely so. Let, let's talk about homelessness, too. That's a different topic that you guys have had uh, some interesting stories and interesting success in as well, too. It's an ever-present problem in any city. What is Fort Worth doing differently? Give us the overview first. You know, every major city has homeless issues that we're focused on. Fort Worth's no exception. We had Directions Home. Mayor Mike, in his wisdom, brought forward Directions Home 10 years ago. It's had great impact. We have gone in now following that and restructured the Continuum of Care, which is the overriding board that funds throw through, flow through, that takes care of homelessness, goes down to our providers to have elected officials at the top. It's Mayor Williams from Arlington, Judge Whitley, myself, and Mayor Pat D Dean, our county judge from Parker County. And really, it's a great way to make your elected officials know more of what's going on. But what we're doing is focusing on housing first. We know that the least expensive way to handle homelessness is to get them in permanent supportive housing. The city has allocated $5.6 million for permanent supportive housing. That's profits from our Housing uh, Solutions Corporation. But the good news is, this is a great example of a partnership. The Morris Foundation has announced that they will match dollar for dollar the amount that we put in to support permanent housing. The faith-based community has stepped up and gotten involved. First Presbyterian just dedicated a million dollars to help with permanent supportive housing. And Broadway Baptist, who you heard Pastor Price earlier give the invocation, stepped up and provided three, nearly four months worth of shelter this year. Really, it's been a great win. It's a major shift away from thinking about just getting education, getting jobs, getting everything into housing where then they can get the services that they need. And use that as a jump start. That's right. But, but talk about jobs because the city is actually hiring some homeless people to do jobs. We are. A partnership with Brandon Bennett from our code compliance uh, department head and Toby Owens at Presbyterian Night Shelter formed Clean Slate. It's a litter program that we hire the folks coming out of the Presbyterian Night Shelter and other homeless areas to come and pick up the trade, pick up the trash all over town. It gives them a steady stream of income. Part of it, they have to go back, work on their education, work on other things. But we now have 15 full-time employees at the City of Fort Worth that have come out of that program. I'm really pleased with where Clean Slate program is going. The, the other big uh goal surpassing moment you guys had too was for homeless veterans. Mm -hmm. you, you hope to get housing for a hundred of them and you've almost doubled that so far in t or, or last year in 2018. We had a goal and from November, from late October into the end of December to house a hundred veterans in a hundred days. And that's a pretty audacious goal. So we came together with our providers at the shelter, MHMR, the Veterans Association, and our Apartment Owners Association and said, let's put as many veterans as we can. And one of the holdups is that many of these veterans can't afford the deposit for their apartment. So we got our apartment owners to agree to waive those deposits. And I'm proud to say that we now have 181 veterans in that 100 days who are in permanent housing. You know, those who've served us on the front line and worked so hard shouldn't be homeless. It, has to, it should be a focus for everyone, but particularly for our veterans. Congratulations, Mayor. Next topic, mobility, one that affects everybody. Congratulations, I-35W, uh, finally open. But there's news that you have about we do. another stretch. I know you all want to stand up and <laughs> cheer because you've got better access on I-35, right? <laughs> 
Most of you know I-35 has been under construction forever. The good news is February the 28th, and we're going to be front and center, my friend Bruce Bug, who's chairman of TxDOT, has promised that we will have the funding in place for 3C, the last leg where it necks down now will be widened out, and you can keep going all the way up 35. Wow. That's a big win. That's on the Texas Motor Speedway up to Denton. From Eagle, from 281 to Eagle Parkway, Texas Motor Eagle Parkway, Speedway. gotcha. And oh. it'll be a great opportunity. And it isn't just our friends at TxDOT. We've worked hard. They're responsible for those major roads. And we've, believe me, we've pushed tight hard. Victor Vandegrift, Bruce Bug are tired of hearing from me. But I'm not going to let up. Hey. But we also worked with our federal partners. Gotcha. I mean, we want to thank Congresswoman Kay Granger, who's now the ranking member on appropriations, for her work on transportation. And with the Dems running the House now, our own Congressman Mark Vizé is serving on that Energy uh, Commerce Commission, helping us with that. And just yesterday, it was announced that Mark was the majority assistant whip. We're very wow. proud of Mark. Wow. Transportation and transit truly is a partnership, and everybody has to be pulling in the same direction. And Trinity Metro and Texrail, where is the next leg of that going to go? You know, we just, you see this picture. If you, how many of you have ridden Texrail? Oh, that's not near enough. They had major success <laughs> in January and blew through their ridership Good. numbers. Because this project, isn't that a great looking train? Yeah. Because this project came in under budget and on time, they now have some money to carry forward. We're hopeful that it'll go south towards the medical district, ultimately south out into the Tarleton area. I know Councilmember Jordan is excited about that. Scott Mahaffey and his crew, Bob Bowsher at Trinity Metro have worked so hard. Now if I could just get them to keep their name, they've been the T, right. F Fort Worth Transit Authority, and now Trinity Metro, they changed their name more than P. Diddy. <laughs> really, seriously, they've done a wonderful job on transit. If we can't deliver transit and ultimately long-term connect on innovation, just like Jeff Williams has VIA in Arlington, Dallas has DART expand it, Fort Worth has to expand it. 81% of us drive to work in single cars. Only 11% take transit, and the balance is 1% who walk or take bikes. And 81%. Isn't that amazing? Wow. If we're going to be a successful region by 2035, which is not very far out, or 2036, Texas is centennial, we've got to have a regional approach that's a creative, innovative approach to transportation. Well, in the last 10 or 12 minutes, there are a couple more topics here. Education. Absolutely. Which is one. Uh, let's talk about what's on the tables here, on every table in here. Um, there are big bouquets and things like that. There's something special on the tables. Yeah, this year for the first time, because we're focusing on education, because it will change the future, folks. It touches everything we do, from crime, economic development, quality of life. Scholastic came in and donated the books that are on your table, along with Clifford, the big red dog that's on your table. I know you all know Clifford. <laughs> but you, they donated all those books, and they'll go to the children in 20 schools, low performing. Dr. Scribner's here and helped us identify those schools. And these kids don't have books at home. And for children to really be literate and increase their learning, they have to be exposed to books early on. This will be pre-K through second grade. If you want to donate to that effort, you can go to readfortworth.org or donate, or you can simply leave a check or cash on the table today, and we'll add additional books. It's a shameless plug, I know, but Matt Rose would kick me if I didn't plug this program. And their success with Read Fort Worth as well, too, you have to announce. Yeah. We're, you know, our goal for Read Fort Worth is third grade literacy. This crew knows that. Kids have to read at third grade level to be successful. And with the partnership with Matt as chairman, Kent Scribner in my office, we came up with the goal of 100 by 2025. To get there, there's a chart up on there that'll show you. It's an audacious goal. As my kids would say, it's a bow hag, a big hairy goal. But that shows you we've come a long way. We've come 5% in the last two years, but we're going to have to jump this forward. To get to 100% by 2025, we need a 9.3% annual growth in literacy year over year. So Fort Worth has had some real successes in some of our programs. 
one of them being our summer slide program. Dr. Glenice Robinson runs that. This year, every program that the city touches where there's children involved will have a major literacy component. We voted to accept that, and last summer we saw a big drop in summer slide where kids lose the right. amount that they've learned. Now we expect to see an even bigger rise in that because we know we'll have at least 5,000 children involved in the summer slide program. And a special surprise today, Jackson Shaw, one of our businesses stepped up and donated $20,000 wow. to help with this summer slide initiative. Wow. That's just announced today. <laughs> Kids involved in summer slide last year saw a 70% gain in their literacy versus those who weren't and who had lost over the summer. Hopefully we meet that goal. Do you think well, you feel pretty we confident? We will meet that goal. This is Fort Worth. <laughs> well, let's talk about uh, one thing you're known for, riding bikes, healthy cities. You still ride your bike these days? I still ride as much as I can. I'm running the Cowtown Half Marathon, or should I say I'm plodding through the Cowtown Half Marathon this weekend. But I love to ride my bike, and I still do, because I think healthy communities are stronger, more vibrant, encouraged communities. One of the things we asked you about last time you run our program on Inside Texas Politics was about Blue Zone. And, and that's this is a pretty wide-ranging program that, that's in the community now. It in, is. In restaurants and other places. It is. It's an uh, all-encompassing program in Fort Worth, and it's we're five and a half years into it, and I'm proud to say this year we were Blue Zone certified, which makes us the largest city in the nation to be Blue Zone certified. You may or may not, that's a big win. We had better than 200,000 people. The chamber came to the table, THR sponsored. It was an incredible effort. 200,000 people took the Blue Zones pledge. But one reason that's so important, folks, is, and Bill probably shoot me for disclosing this, when we looked at the first round of statistics five and a half years ago, Gallup Wellbeing surveys communities, er, surveys the top 190 cities in the nation, every year and has for years, according to how the health is in the community, how people feel about their community, their overall well-being, and Fort Worth ranked number 185 out of 190. Wow. After five years of hard work on Blue Zone, this year's Gallup Well-Being showed we were number 58. Wow. That's a huge gain. And that's attractive, not just for quality of life, which it changes for people dramatically. Education efforts are better. Children learn better. When they're in school, when they're healthy, it's great. Wow. And businesses are more attracted to that, too. And you're leading by example. I'm trying. So, so go ahead. Early childhood, um, before we run totally out Yeah, of absolutely. Go, go ahead and er, early childhood then. Yeah. One of the things we kind of skipped over on education is, as we dug into this, we realized the real key, we can't be starting that pipeline over every year as kindergarten. We have to back up and look at birth to pre-K or birth to kindergarten. That's where major gains are being made. And I'm proud to announce this year that Fort Worth is doing a great spaces for kids. There's a blueprint on your table I hope you'll take a look at as to why we're doing this. We've seen a 62% increase just in the last couple of years on quality child care. But if you're a low-income family living just above the poverty level, you can expect to spend 60% of your income on child care. Mm. And if you're not making much money, many of these people withdraw from the workforce. That puts them back on poverty and welfare. It impacts their children's education. So we're going to back up. Even the Federal Reserve Bank weighed in and said, for every dollar invested on early childhood, quality early childhood education, it's a $16 return. Fort Worth has committed $500,000 and several of our foundations have agreed to help us move that needle forward. The announcement will be that we're enlarging the Gregg Community Center and Kelly Allen Gray Center to accommodate more and more children. We've got a prime example with UNT Health Science and Lena Pope Holmes' partnership for underwriting child care. My challenge to all of you as businesses is to go talk to your workforce. Find out how early child care is impacting them. Who are you losing that should be at work? Well, you're losing that part that even young professional women are opting to stay home because they can't afford or can't find 
quality child care. We've got to move the needle if we're ever going to move families out of poverty, particularly single families. And in Fort Worth, one in three children live in a single family home. We've got to change that, and we've got to change poverty, make one Fort Worth successful for all. And I believe the place to start is for each and every one of us to look at our parental leave policies and look at our investment in early quality child care. A challenge to businesses. Absolutely. A lot of topics. You've had a lot of success as well, too. Why in the world do you want another term? I think... <laughs> I think there are probably a lot of people saying, why are you doing this again? <laughs> Particularly my daughter, who's given me the evil eye over here. You know, I love this city. We've had incredible success, incredible growth. I want to see that growth available to everybody. I want to continue to move the issue, the needle on community health, to move education forward for all families, for all children. You've heard me say before, nobody's zip code should determine their future. Nobody should be limited by where they live for success in Fort Worth. I think we have to make this one Fort Worth for all, and I think our business community, we have bar none the best business community in the nation. They understand these issues. They'll come forward and partner with us moving forward to increase that. You know, it really is, we want one Fort Worth, and after all, folks, this is our city. You helped build it and you can help us move the needle forward. I'd like to be here a while longer because it truly is worth the work. All right, Mayor, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. All right. Excellent. I thank you're all officially dismissed. Make a donation to Reed Fort Worth. Leave thank a check on the table, right? <laughs> thank you guys very much. Thank you.